Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining another podcast episode from CSM Practice. This podcast episode is sponsored by CSM Practice, the customer success strategy consulting firm, the first one in the world. In this podcast, we talk a lot about things that relates to customer success. And one of the things that I love doing is shatter misbeliefs like customer support is so reactive. We should probably not have people from support migrating into customer success. And even if we did that mistake, they would never be successful. I have two people that can attest to how different that could be. They're going to share about their journey moving from support to customer success. Why did it make such a great move for them from a career standpoint? And if you're in that same place where you work in technical support and you want to switch over to customer success, they're going to share some tips to tell you how to do it, what worked for them, and what's the situation where this is called for and you could be super, super successful with that move. Wasim and Imra, thank you so much for joining me. Maybe you could share. Which company are you currently work for? What kind of clients do you help? Thanks for that. So currently I'm associated with an organization called Browser Stack. So we are basically a SaaS startup. We are heading our way from magical land of India. And currently I am manager customer success, catering to majorly customers from Asia Pacific region. What kind of business problems do you help your customers solve? Majorly uh, technical in terms of implementing the browse tech solution that these guys have got the license for. And then I also have Imro Bidu. Imro, thank you for coming to the show as well. You also transitioned from a technical support role and you're now a director of customer success. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about 20, 30 seconds. Where do you work? What kind of clients do you help? Thank you for having me. Indeed, I started out as technical support for a company named uh, Basware. It's a Finnish based SaaS company which recently went into private equity owned. And basically what we do, we are all about true automation and going paperless. So we basically arrange invoice traffic, PO traffic between organizations worldwide. And what problems do we solve? Well, effectively we ensure that our customers can send business documents, pay them on time and make it as touchless as possible and also have an efficient workforce. How long ago have either of you transitioned from support to customer success? So I started at Basware about 19 years ago. And in the first couple of years, I was on the support desk. Then we started into service management. And that was about four years into my journey in the company. So I've been working in service and success management for about 14 years now. Wow. So it's been a long journey since you've done a pure technical support role. What about you, Asim? So I started my journey with Browser Stack as technical support team member. So I learned the product and worked with the support team with roughly 18 months. And post that, I transitioned into customer success. And now I just completed six years with Browser Stack. Asim, maybe you can share what has dramatically changed since you switched role. Like if you had to compare a day in the life of a support agent versus a day in the life of a customer success manager. What are the main things that changed with that transition? The one thing that stands out for me is the approach here. So back in the days from technical support point of view, we only had transactional interactions with the customer. If there's a support ticket, we try to solve it, then try to close the ticket as fast as possible and then move on. But when I moved into customer success role, it's more like a partnership plus a strategic advisor. The total opposite of being reactive and in this sphere of life, it's more proactive. When you look at a typical day or a typical week of a customer support agent versus a customer success manager, what are the key things that change in the day to day? in terms of interactions with customers, but maybe even with internal teams, do you see a big difference? Yes. Also the audience that we would speak to will change. So in the support days, you're very much talking to people operationally on the day to day, ensuring that, Hey, my system broke down. We need to get it fixed. Troubleshooter. So very much an individual contributor in the move to the success management, we often change who we talk to within the company because we are more on the topic of objectives, 
return on investments, which KPIs to achieve. Also, that changes our dynamic within the company. We often also have different goals. If we talk about renewals, upsells, which is also more often in success management. So whereas a technical support, you maybe talk to R&D, product management. We also engage a lot more with our sales colleagues. So this is one of the main differentiators that I would say from tech support to success. Wasim, do you remember if your comp plan structure changed, meaning bonus or incentives or the way they measured your performance? Did they look at different metrics as you switched from role to role? And if so, can you talk about that? So from support, it moved from a reactive approach to a proactive approach. So of course, the overall dynamics also changed. Herein, we are looking forward to more on customer ROI, focusing on our uh, renewals, like a customer lifecycle license renewal. So our overall component is majorly focused on these KPIs primarily. And being in SaaS, the overall user adoption or the product adoption, how good the end user team is in terms of consuming the license that these guys have opted for. So that is also one important factor. We made a recent change in the organization in terms of KPIs and bonuses that across support up to success managers, we had one target now, which is our retention. Because if you would have individual goals as support, you would stay in small silos. You would have done your job, but in the end, it's about the customer. So we have basically removed about 50 KPIs, reduced them to about five. Wow. So what are the five that you reduced to for both support and CS that are the same for both teams? Obviously renewals. What else? Yeah. So we actually focused on two for this year mainly. It's the net retention, basically. And it's also indeed our customer satisfaction. So both combined will have a number. Effectively, the net retention rate is something that we didn't measure effectively before, but it's quite tangible for the people that, hey, this is what we're all working towards, is this renewal. And then, of course, happy customers would be the second one. Wasim, is it the same case for you? You talked about the metrics that as a CSM, how your performance is being gauged. When you were a customer support agent, did you have different metrics that you were like being reviewed on? Or maybe you want to share, is it the same in your support team? Do you share the same metrics for the current organization? No, we had different metric back for our support team. And even that holds true right now. The overall focus is to make sure the support team member resolves the end user query and with the minimum possible replies. That's like the overall essence of how we conduct our interactions with our customers. You both switched. What made you make the switch? Why not staying in support? I was a couple of years already in the support and of course, uh, helping out the customers. But I got an opportunity to join a meeting with one of our executives to present a long-term plan to act as a service manager at the time, working more on a strategic level. So initially I did not know much about that role, but I did know that I wanted to contribute a little bit more to the relationship than just focusing on the individual tickets. That role gave me the opportunity to not only work on the ticket side of things, but take it to the next level, basically elevating the relation, but also helping the customer in a long-term way, instead of the short-term solutions. That spoke to me a lot. This is why I made that decision. What about you, Wasim? What propelled you to move away from support and into customer success? We usually have monthly meetings with the entire team, the technical support team and manager. Back then, we had a common manager because our team was quite small. Technical support team and uh, initial phase of uh, customer success at Browser Stack. So uh, during that meeting, I just pointed out one fact that certain type of queries are quite repetitive. So uh, what is the customer facing team doing for it? You guys can try to avoid this. So my manager turned to me and uh, he simply asked me, why don't you try to do it? Yeah, Tag, you're it. What a great idea. Then did you step into it? Not at uh, the very instant, but it did ring a bell. If I understand the product and if I can see a pattern, I was not aware of the solution right there, but I did acknowledge there was a trend around here. So then I took some time and had a word with my manager. Well, seen. You took this on at some point, you became a customer success manager. Was it like a gradual transition 
or did it happen sort of like overnight? It was gradual. In the initial days, I carried my baggage of being reactive. So I would say for the first 60 days or maybe an entire quarter, I was still in the reactive mode. Any query, I used to answer over the email or directly invite the customer for a quick Zoom meeting so that I address it and then I used to forget it. That was not good, but it was a good start at least for me. Okay, so did they give you the title of a CSM while keeping you on as a support agent part-time? Or what you're saying is, no, 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 I actually transitioned to be a CSM, but I kept on doing things as if I'm a support agent. No, no, it was actually senior customer success specialist. The role was actually customer success. And what you're saying is it took me about 60 to 90 days to fully transition mentally, because I was going to ask you, what was one of the most challenging things in making that transition? Because it's a completely different way of thinking even, or like interacting or prioritizing. You have to teach yourself how to prioritize. The system is not going to do it for you. So that was a bit of a challenge with changing your mindset. I feel the same. So when I transitioned, it meant thinking a lot differently because I was still in the modus of, because you can do the work, but you have to also trust the support team, which you're no longer part of. And this is the transition that I had to learn because often in meetings, when I knew the answer, I also should keep in mind, I have to give room to the support agent and not interfere with their work. So this was something I learned gradually. It took some time, but in the end, I saw it's better for me, better for the customer and better for the support agent. Okay, so learn your swim lane and how to interact with other functions in the organization because you're no longer in that team. You now have your own team and then also learn how to change the way you learn how to prioritize and learn how to be proactive. That's a big transition. Do you think that in general, what would you recommend for those who do choose to do the move? They make the move from support, a reactive role, fast break, fix issues to let's talk about business needs and be more consultative. What are some of the things that at Hinside you would have recommended yourself as you were making this transition so it'll be faster and smoother? Are there any classes you eventually take in or blogs you've read or what would you do differently, I suppose? Yeah, that's a very good point actually because I had some thoughts lately about my journey in the company. I had to present something. And what I would have done differently is some courses that I have taken later on, it would have been easier if I have done it a bit earlier, asking more advice because I was under the impression that sometimes I knew everything. But as we went through the journey, I asked more advice and support as I went from my colleagues, also on my own performance. So in hindsight, I could have done it a little bit more the first months, but it ended okay. But I would give that back to the audience to be open for feedback and ask feedback. What are some of the good questions that you actually were very happy that somebody new asked you when they just joined and just made that transition? That at Hinsight, if you asked those a little earlier, you would have actually gotten the feedback and got a lot better. This is something that you had you know, just mentioned. So For me, this would be around transparency. So when I was a support agent, you always had to be quite clear, precise. This was the issue. This is why it happened very straightforward. But what I learned being in success, it's fine, but you also can word it a bit differently because you have a different audience. So what I would have asked more often or earlier in my transition from support agent to success is how would you phrase or reply to the customer in this way? Because there are two different replies possible on different levels. And that's something I have asked a lot in my journey becoming a success manager on how to communicate properly. If anybody's listening, you're just moving to a new role, don't be afraid to ask for feedback. Actually, it's almost like you're so comfortable with your own skin that you don't mind asking for feedback. It's just a way for you to get better. And that is super appealing. Ask for feedback. And then you said, I read some books, maybe did some training that helped me out. And I wish I did those earlier. Can you mention a little bit like what those are and what would you recommend somebody that's just transitioning to take on either as classes or books that you've read? So actually I've done a lot of LinkedIn learning classes 
practice were offered throughout our organization. Plus, I did a couple of Harvard studies, the online certifications. It was the organizational leadership and strategy execution. And basically, this was later on, but it helped me focus with other people from other parts of the world on how are you doing these things. So learning from each other, this was my goal. So one part was learning from the textbooks, but the other part for me was finding other people around the world and engaging with them and asking advice. How was their journey? How did they you know, become who they are at the moment? So mostly those two channels I have used. Plus I have read a lot of blogs, for example, subscribing to your channel as well. Through all these interactions and posts, I got to learn a lot more. So I would advise the audience to be present, be online. There's a lot of information out there on the blogs and the websites. Please do read up on this. Read up on what is customer success, join a community with your peers, do some classes. So the Stanford classes, the certifications that you've done on leadership, on strategic maneuvers, I think those were helpful. What about you, Asim? What have you taken on that you thought helped you propel and become a lot better than what you were in those first 90 days. Right before transitioning to my customer success role, there was a quick workshop over the weekend from Dale Carnegie University. So that helped me a lot. It was over a period of four weekends that we were allowed to roll into. So it was basically two weekends each for business communication and for world-class customer service. That helped me a lot because when I started implementing it, into my day-to-day -day life, it's when I understood that, okay, small things do matter. How you communicate with your clients, how to ask the right questions without being rude. So you just need to understand and investigate. For that, you need to sugarcoat yourself and be more persuasive in terms of understanding what the exact use case or problem is. So that helped me a lot. So I would recommend that to all of the folks. So the first one you took was about business communication. And what was the second one? World-class customer service. World-class customer service. And Imro, you took? Strategy execution and organizational leadership from Harvard. And on LinkedIn Learning, effectively dozens. Do you think that the transition from a technical support role into customer success can work more easily, the probability of doing a successful transition works well in certain types of companies, meaning where the product is super technical or maybe the work with the clients is super transactional because we have a lot of them. Or do you think there's certain characters where you would say, yeah, if you're going to do this transition, do it in this type of organization first, then you can try something else is there like something that i should know about that you feel like yeah probably in this environment the transition is more likely to be successful i would feel and this is from my own experience is that the industry that we are operating in is all about customers that looking for an investment to get a certain return to be more efficient and here you can make a difference so it's not only about product usage or have the most users for your app for example but creating momentum with the customer and adding the value. So I would say any type of business where the customer would invest in your product or service with the intention of a specific return, whether it's efficiency, FTEs, monetary, that all would be a good because you can work with these customers towards those goals given the investment that they have made. What kind of organizations don't have customers invest in their product and hoping to get value out of it? If you're purely looking at, for example, an app for a specific need, okay, everybody would want to have as much usage of the app. So maybe your sole intention is as much usage as possible on the platform, which is fine by itself. But if you're more strategically looking into helping the customer reach a specific goal of their organization, I would see that as a bit different depending on the industry that they are in. Listen, when you transition from technical support to customer success, you're better off doing it at a company where the customer success manager is in a consultative role where the customer wants to hear your feedback as to how you're going to get the most from the solution to meet your business goals. Whereas if you work for a company that all they want to do is increase usage 
or your role is about adopting features and function and it's a less consultative role, or maybe it's more of a salesy role, kind of like, okay, you're, you're in charge of 300 customers and your job is to do the renewal transactions, then probably it's not the right fit. Well, interestingly enough, we want from our success managers to own upsell, renewals, cross-sells. Right. So if you come from technical support, how the heck are you going to do upsells and uh, manage the renewal transaction? We have actually created a whole program that you have to pass a certain certification coming from whatever role you're coming from, where we outline these elements. Plus, we have partnered up with a specific customer success platform, Gainsight. Through Gainsight, we also have certifications as a customer success manager. So with those two combined, we will then have one track for the sales part because we as a customer success team want to own the relation with the customer that contains also sales elements okay. and we do offer training for that do you find that the ones that come from support are better at upsell and renewals than the ones that are actually coming from a sales background no well the best role to jump into customer success i think from history coming from a totally different role would be a teacher yeah if you're on technical support we have seen hidden gems because often people find their way throughout their journey. And if it would appeal to them, the sales element, upsells, cross-sells, renewing contracts, you have to have this internal spark. And if you don't, it's a sink or swim. So I would say it's probably not the right fit. If you want to kind of like bullseye, 80% chance you're going to be successful in this transition, your type of organization is probably more of a hit and miss because the team does own the renewals and upsells. The team is actually doing a role that I would think would be very beneficial if you did support before because customer success manager does need to have super technical skills. So I thought the answer would be when the solution is super technical, it's highly customizable, it has a lot of widgets, it's not a simple solution like, okay, you just configure it a little bit. You do have to have deep technical expertise most likely whatever you learned as a technical support manager would be very, very helpful for you in being successful in your next role as a CSM. What do you think? I totally agree on that front. One precursor for that, the product should be quite technical. That's where technical expertise comes into picture. I would want to dial back to your earlier query regarding upsells and cross-sells. I believe technical expertise does help because since the customer success already has hands-on experience, so he or she can handhold the customer and guide him or her given the entire ecosystem of products, solutions that are out in the market. So it's up to a consultative approach, as you rightly mentioned, to share the highs and the lows, the pros and the cons with the customer and post that it's up to the customer how they would want to take it because nobody's here to waste their time. They're looking up to us as an trusted advisor. So that's what we ought to be. If I had to translate that in customer success terms, I would say they'd be great at uptelling the client, not necessarily upselling, but uptelling. And where that works well is either where you work for somebody like Imro that gives you all the certifications and all the tools in the world to catch up on those skills. Because uh, sometimes you're just like dropped into an organization that doesn't, and then it's sink or swim, right? Like, what am I going to do now? Or if you don't have awesome certifications and classes and employee enablement so mature, like in Imro's organization, then you would hope that you work in tandem with an account manager or a sales rep. So whenever you do have an uptel conversation with a client and the client says, yes, I want to do that, you just whoop bring the financial transaction to somebody else. And then you don't have to necessarily right off the bat, your first time as a CSM deal with these new skills. It's quite intimidating. That being said, I've seen new CSMs rise to the occasion many, many times. So if you feel like you have it in you to learn quickly and master that and be comfortable with that, go for it. I mean, if this was your brother or sister, it was their first time transitioning from support to an organization. What are the things that they would want to look for as a home for their first CSM job to make sure that they're super successful? So one, either an organization that has all the training in the world available to you so that you could step into it as easily as and as fastly as possible. And if not, be prepared to take some online classes, either on LinkedIn or Stanford or whatever is available in your community. Or like, we'll see, take on a role where you feel like you naturally fit, 
embrace as much as your consultative skill set as possible and buffer them as fast as you can. Thank you for your time today, coming in, sharing about your own personal journey. I'm sure it will help a lot of other technical support managers or agents that want to move into customer success to kind of see what's in it for them and what it does it take to be successful in this transition. Thank you, Edith. Thank you, Wasim. It has been great. Likewise. Thank you, bro. Thank you, Edith. All right, everyone. If you enjoyed this conversation, you found it useful and valuable, give us a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, reach out to Wasim and Imro and tell them what a good job they did on LinkedIn. I'm sure you can find them very easily. And with yes. that, I'll see you at the next interview. Thank you for joining our podcast today. Have a beautiful day.